Thank you for joining me for another preview video where we'll be looking at Arsenal taking Mulder in the Europa League this Thursday. Realistically, did Mulder have any opportunities or chance to win this game? Personally speaking, no. Reason? Because we are the greatest team, the biggest team in the world. We are the team that absolutely smashed Manchester United over the weekend. The team with the greatest manager in world football. The team with the greatest signing of the summer in Thomas Party. With the greatest prospect in world football in the Egyptian uh, magician in El Nessie. And not to mention the team with the greatest fan base in the world. And that is Arsenal, of course. And obviously, of course, I'm exaggerating and I'm... Only reflecting some of our fan base on social media since our um, victory against Man United over the weekend. Yes, great result. And I'm not denying that we were the better team and we've thoroughly deserved to win that. But then again, put things into perspective. We only had two shots on target. We only won 1-0 and it was a penalty. Yes, it was a right call. It was a penalty. And on the balance of play, we were the better team. And most United fans will probably admit that as well. Including Roy Keane, who absolutely you know, slaughtered the United players um, post-game and spoke highly of Arteta and the vision he's trying to deploy here at the, t um, at the club. So for me, personally speaking, yes, we're on the right track and I have seen us, or Arteta, shall I say, do more good than bad. But I just like to be level-headed in these things and, for example, whenever we lose, you see people coming out saying, Arteta oh, out, he's useless, can't do nothing when we win. Arteta, oh, we love you, greatest manager ever. Why can't we just be balanced? Why can't we support the guy? But at the same time, when he does make mistakes, criticise him, you know, call him out. But still, back behind him, back the team. And that's what I'm trying to say. Let's get behind the team, get behind Arteta. But not blindly. Let's criticise him when he deserves it. But don't, you know, be toxic and don't try force him out. Let's, let's, let's give the team some time, you know. And perhaps maybe this is the reason why the team is doing better since the whole lockdown because let's be honest sometimes we can be a toxic fan base can't we we go and we sort of say things remember the um towards the latter stages of arsenal arsenal wenger's career arsenal where you'd go into a stadium and it was just wenger in wenger out and it just seems like it's like that with everything in life ain't it you're either one side or you're that side you're either brexit or you're remain you're wenger in you're wenger out it's why can't we just you know be quite level-headed and sort of see things for what they are and, you know, not necessarily be one thing and not the other. Just have a bit of balance. That's all I'm saying. But let's look into the game anyway um, against Mulder this Thursday. So about our opposition, the Norwegian outfit are currently sat second in the Norwegian league. They have also beaten um, one, sorry, uh, two games in the Europa League. Beating Dundalk 2-1 away and last week beating Rapid Vienna at their ground with a goal to nil. So they have um, perhaps maybe overachieved than what most people would think. In particular with that result against Rapid Vienna. So therefore we shouldn't take them too lightly. Also um, in terms of the player to watch out. They've got a striker in form who's scored in both games. Excuse my pronunciation, I believe is Omar Huanfo, who scored a goal um, in both games and also been decent in the Norwegian League so far. However, that being said, I reckon we'll still go out there and win. I want to sort of see us um, adopt a four at the back because I've already said that I feel as if the Europa League should be a competition in which Mikel Arteta should be able to experiment for the future of the club. Let him embed a system, a style right now in these cup games and maybe perhaps that could be embedded in our um, long term plan in the league etc. So I would like to sort of see us play more expansive football, go out there, be a bit creative and I don't want to see any players um, who played from the weekend playing in this game. I just think that it's quite a congested season um, ahead of us. With the whole COVID thing, we never know as well when another um, lockdown could occur and that would somehow halt football. And then if we were to bring football back again, we're going to sort of see games appearing every other day like, you know, um, post lockdown previously. So um, I think rest is very key to our success in both the cup competition as well as league. 
So without wasting any more time, I'm just going to go in with into my um, predicted 11. And this is, will be a, a lineup I would like to see Arteta put out um, against Vienna. Sorry, not Vienna, Molde tomorrow. So um, in goal, I want to see Ronison play there. Thought he looked decent. Wasn't tested too much against the game in Dundalk. But in terms of distribution, playing out from the back, I thought he looked very composed in terms of catching the crosses. Decent. So I would like to sort of um, see him exposed more. See if he can actually... Um, Phil Leno's boots if there were an, an issue to um, occur to Leno. So, without um, wasting any more time, that's Runnison in goal. Moving on to um, the back four. Right back, Cedric Suarez. He looked a little better um, in the game against Dundalk than Rapid Vienna. Maybe he just needs that confidence and he needs regular football to get back into sort of um, top shape. And then maybe he might be able to push... Um, Bellerin or challenge Bellerin on the right hand side. I just personally speaking, I would have liked to seen um, Ainsley deployed at the right, but I just I'm starting to understand and I'm starting to um, come to terms that Mikel Arteta sees Ainsley as a um, backup left back instead, and he prefers him on the left hand side rather than the right. So Cedric on the right hand side for me, and that comes to the left back, which. Um, I sort of um, touched upon I can see Ainsley playing there and I'm going to go with Ainsley as a left back in terms of the two centre backs Mustafi he didn't feature on the weekend and I'm so glad he didn't I'm so so glad that you know God blessed us with a miracle and he somehow got Rob Holden to Hill and come back to face United because if Mustafi was there trust me we would not have won that game would have but anyways, I'm not going to go back to the United game. Mustafi, yeah, unfortunately, and that's only... But even Mustafi can't fuck up against Mulder, and that's the only reason why I'm playing him. Ideally, I would have liked to see Saliba there, but for whatever issue, we just decided not to include him. And now there's stories about Saliba wanting out, and he's wanting um, requesting a loan. Can't confirm if these rumours are true, but um, yeah, we're just going to have to deal with the clown in Mustafi. And... Um, Alongside him, uh, we've not got much options. You see, I would have liked to have seen him. I'm not sure where... I would have said Chambers, personally speaking, but I don't know where he is in, term of, in terms of um, his comeback. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to go with Kolasinac. Moving on to um, the midfield. I'm going to go with a free midfield, and that would be Granit Xhaka. I'm, I'm hoping that Mikel Arteta is realising Granit Xhaka is not good enough for the league and maybe he is better against um in, in the europa league and that's only because he's facing teams in these other european competition whose league might not be as intense might not be as um physical as a premier league so therefore he he tends to manage those games better so i think granite shackle will play would have a decent game tomorrow and i think he's well rested he should be playing there um willock he had a better game. I personally don't see Willock's future here at Arsenal. But come on, Willock. I want you to prove me wrong this season. And I want you to go there and get a man of the match performance and absolutely make me look stupid. So, Willock, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on you on tomorrow. And I'm hoping you prove me wrong. So, Willock, you get the benefit of that. You're, you're in my team. And um, ahead of you, I'm going to have Emil Smith roll. Yes, he was injured last time out, but... We really need to sort of see what Emil is about. He had a great spell at Huddersfield. And I just want to sort of see him kick on at Arsenal. It's just unfortunate that injuries has plagued his career so far. But Emil Smith-Rowe will go on our team. And in terms of the um, front three, I'm going to go with Nelson on the left-hand side. Thought he looked. He had a decent game. Running running at the defenders against Dundalk. And um, I gave him my man of the match for that performance. So Nelson want him to continue on the right hand side Nicolas Pepe and just didn't quite understand why was he subbed off against Dundalk if he never featured against Manchester United that's <sighs> Mikel Arteta you talk about you know the player not having any consistency and you talk about him not having any confidence but how, how can you expect him to have confidence and consistency when he's never played more than three games he's never started more than three games in a row he um, scores a goal, then gets subbed off. Then he might score a goal and then not feature, not play. And it's just... 
come on Arteta, just please, you know, I'm and this is when I when I was mentioning earlier on about you can't criticize. One major thing I have to criticize about Arteta is is his man management skills is poor, very poor. He just the whole situation with Gondolzi, the situation of Saliba, the situation of Pepe, it's just even Lacazette, it's just very, very poor man management. Sometimes, especially when you see a player like Nicolas Pepe, put your arm around him, say, Pepe, you're going to be great, you're going to go score, you know, I'm going to install that confidence in you and you're going to go out there and prove to the world why we spent £72 million on you. But unfortunately speaking, if we're going to continue treating Pepe like this, we're never going to really see his true worth and we're going to be sat here, you know, with our arms folded saying, yeah, Pepe was a flop. But did we ever, ever give him... Um, did we ever give him the facilities to go on prosper here within Arsenal? No, we didn't. Let's be honest with ourselves. We isolate the right-hand side and we just don't play him week in, week out. So, please, Arteta, if you're not going to play Pepe over the weekend, give him his full 90 minutes. That's all I'm asking. And up front, Balogun. Why Balogun? Because I just think <laughs> I don't have any trust in Eddie Nketiah. I don't think he'll actually personally make it. I think he's a decent striker, but he just doesn't have anything to his game other than being a fox in a box. He, when I see Balogun, he makes runs. He's quite rapid. He's got a quick burst, acceleration. You know, links plays well. And I just think Eddie Nketiah, it's not all that. Remember, yeah, Eddie Nketiah is 21 years old. And he is the same age as Kylian Mbappe. He is actually older than Haaland. Yeah. And he's also the same age as Gwendozi. And if we kind of consider how we treat Gwendozi like he's a mature player and we would go out there and sort of say, um, we have all this expectation of Gwendozi. He's played all these games under Unai Emery and in, in the initial stages of Arteta's reign. But why do we, you know, judge critically on Gwendozi yet yeah, whenever I say anything about Eddie Nketiah I get told hey, you can't say that he's, he's still a youth he's still learning he's 21 he's 21 yeah he is older than Harlan who's smashing it in Dortmund so don't chat shit to me yeah he's not gonna make it I'm sorry Eddie Nketiah yeah has scored only 10 goals so far yeah in his Arsenal career Martinelli yeah 18 years old last season scored more than that that's all i'm saying don't believe me look into the facts that's all i'm saying and if you still think eddie and ketia is gonna make it here at arsenal good luck to you i hope you know actually i don't hope he proves me right because i don't really care about him we've got so many other young talented strikers in tyrese john jules in Balogun, in in martinelli who could come in and play as a number nine so i'm not that fussed if he makes it or not that's that's all but yeah, that's my team. In terms of my prediction for tomorrow, I'm just going to go with um, a 3-0 win again. Yeah, if you could let me know um, what would your team lineup be and what is your score prediction, please subscribe and comment below. Thank you so much.